on this episode of A Step in the Right Direction, we have this from Screen Thrill. Ray Skywalker movie reportedly on hold. Man, it's... It, I, I don't want to give Disney too much credit here, but is it possible? Is it theoretically just probable that maybe they have seen the light? That they have lost so much money over the past few years, dumping hundreds of millions of dollars, billions and billions of dollars of losses, making garbage content that no one ever asked for. No one ever even remotely conceived that they wanted any of it. And they keep making it. But now, at long last, maybe they have lost enough money. Maybe we told them enough times, hey, we don't want to see this crap anymore. We, we do not care about these characters. We don't care about these stories. Go off to making better things. The, go back to going the original Disney route of making good content without all the politics, diversity, inclusion, all that garbage like that. Just go back to making good things. Is it possible that they have finally seen the light? And you know what? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know, because we hear the reports every now and then. We hear the reports that, oh, Bob Iger is, uh, is, is, you know, getting rid of all these people. Kevin Feige's cleaning ship of all the activists. I still think Kevin Feige is, is still responsible for the fall of Marvel at this time. But people are telling me, well, it's a step in the right direction. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, obviously we got Agatha, the uh, the gayest Marvel show of all human history, and we just finished The Acolyte, the gayest Star Wars show of all human history. Man, we all saw what that was coming. We all saw that from a mile away, how bad it was going to be in Agatha. It ain't looking much better. It ain't looking much better at all. So, back to Rey Skywalker, back to her trilogy. Oh, man, it's, it, it does. there's no more story to tell. She's done. You have created the Queen Mary Sue. I would put on the Ma Mount Rushmore. Help me out here. I would say Captain Marvel and Ray Skywalker are definitely on the Mount Rushmores of Mary Sues. But really quickly, let's just take a look at the original Ray trilogy. Star Wars The Force Awakens. $2 billion in the box office. $191 million in TV domestic sales. That's, that's not bad, right? Budget, $500 million. Who the hell knows what the marketing budget is for this movie? It was, I remember when it was coming out, it was on every station. Every YouTube video, this was an ad for it. It was being pushed everywhere. So, I mean, Little Mermaid was $141 million. Who knows how big this, this marketing budget was. But, really interesting. Let's look at The Last Jedi. $1,300,000,000. That's a lot less, right? That's like $700 million less. At home sales for uh, Force Awakens, $191 million. Last Jedi, $100 million. That's a, that's a big difference, right? And the budget, almost half. $262 million. When I saw this, I'm just thinking back at the uh, these two movies. There really wasn't much difference in terms of, I don't know, CGI or big explosion or big scenes or anything like that. They were kind of the same movie. I don't really know where the other, I guess, $250 million was going to for the budget of The Rise of Skywalker. And when people say Disney is a money laundering operation now... I don't know, man. There might... There, allegedly, there could be some kind of truth to that. Supposedly, allegedly. I wouldn't be surprised at this point, though, because they are just hemorrhaging money. Acolyte, $180 million. One of the worst shows ever made. Forget the Star Wars brand. If it was just Samurais or just a regular fantasy show, it's still bad. Just Star Wars makes it worse. And $180 million, where did it go to? When you got Godzilla minus one, $15 million was the reported maximum budget for this movie. Dude, it's so much better a movie. It looks so much better. It was a better movie. One of the best movies I've ever seen in my entire life, Godzilla minus one. The Acolyte. 
180 millions. One of the worst shows ever made. Big difference here. Now let's go to the rise of Skywalker. One billion dollars. At home sales, 68 million. It is dropping. Every one of these movies has lost a significant amount of money in profits. And the budget for this one, $275 million. So who knows? Who really knows if this movie made any money back? With the marketing budget, a lot of this stuff is online. It's kind of hard to tell what's real and what's not, but I don't know, man. It might have been a lot. I would say it was certainly a lot more than $140 million for The Little Mermaid. We're talking about one of the biggest Star Wars movies they were ever trying to make. And again, somehow the budget of this one was almost half of that of The Force Awakens. This doesn't make any sense. The Rise of Skywalker, in terms of of scope of what they were doing, with a thousand Star Destroyers in those final scenes, that looked a lot bigger than The Force Awakens. So the budget is almost half? Oh, that's some fishy there. It's, to me, it does not pass the smell test at all. But let's look towards the future. With these numbers here, with these massive decline in numbers, the Ray Trilogy is dead. Who would want it? If you're, if, like I said, if you're just a business person, and I showed you these three movies, and showed you that, yes, each one of them lost a significant amount in worldwide box office numbers and at home sales, you would say, wow, this is terrible. This is not going in the right direction at all. Same thing here with Aquaman. First movie came out, $1 billion. Did fantastic in the box office. $160 million budget. Oof. Made a lot of money back. Good for them. Wasn't a bad movie. Second movie comes out, $400 million, $433 million, a budget of $200 million, box office flop. You went, again, from a billion dollar movie to not even $500 million afterwards. In a sequel, usually you would think the sequel would make more money, right? You would think, okay, we made a billion dollars, let's step it up for the next one. Let's do everything right. Let's make the greatest movie everyone's ever seen. No, they're going in the opposite direction here. These movies are garbage. These sequels are terrible. So now, if you're Disney, if you're the Disney executives, the marketing people, all the people that are in control of the money, and you're looking at Ray Skywalker, every one of these movies have lost a significant amount of viewers and lost a lot of money. You going to make a another Ray trilogy? That's that's insane to think of. And to what end? People don't really know this. They made a Disney World hotel. I think it was going to call it the Galactic Star Cruise or something like that. They closed it down. A hotel. How do you close down a hotel where people just sleep at? You spent a ton of money on a hotel and that got closed down. You have all these shows that no one is watching. Dare I say, The Skeleton Crew might be the best TV show of the Star Wars live action. Sure, it looks a little bit ridiculous here and there with the uh, the space suburbs, but I don't think it's going to screw with the canon and lore. It's not going to take Obi-Wan Kenobi and just turn him into a wimp. It's not going to say, oh, Ahsoka, you were such a popular character with the Clone Wars series. Let's have you do nothing. Let's have Thrawn, one of the coolest characters in the books, and just make him do nothing. Let's take Boba Fett and make him dance with the Tusken Raiders. Let's make the Acolyte and do everything we did with that one. Honestly, truthfully, I think the best thing that Disney Star Wars has done in terms of TV shows and specials have probably been the Lego stuff. The Lego ones are actually kind of funny. They're well done. And the live action, they're all garbage. They, it's a, it's decline, it's such a recession of just terrible ideas 
They're all just coming in. It just seems like they're going to do the worst job they can ever think of. So somehow, someone at Disney looked at these numbers and said, you know what? Maybe we should put a hold on this thing. I know they're talking about the writer's strike as a reason. Let's be clear for a second. The writer's strike has nothing to do with this. No. No, it does. It has nothing to do with that. Write the thing. It's not that complicated. But no, 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 no. That's the excuse. I've also read that for some odd reason, Kathleen Kennedy might be making a quiet departure from Lucasfilms. So who knows? Who really knows what's going on behind Lucasfilms and Disney behind closed doors? But all I can say is, just looking at the numbers, just a pure numbers thing, there is no interest in Ray Skywalker. No, no one, no one cares about this character, and no one's going to care about this character. The Force Awakens, dare I say, I enjoyed it. I will say that, you know what, I watched it, I thought this is not bad, but most importantly, it had enough building blocks that made me interested to see the other two movies. And what did they do? Crushed my hopes and dreams. The mystery of Rey, she's Rey Palpatine. I ha- I'm gonna make a second video of this. I, I question, I really question the sex life of Sheev Palpatine. I want to know how he had a child. And more importantly, what happened to that child after it was conceived? It just, you know what, screw it. I'm going to get to it right now. What happened to that child? So, let me get straight. So, he had sex with a woman. They produced a child. And then she wasn't living on the ship with them or something? That this child was able just to, to leave and it wasn't being mentored and groomed into being the, the next Palpatine? Why wouldn't you do that? You're making an heir for the future. I, I'm, so, I'm so confused of how this child just decided, okay, I'm going to go to a desert planet and then procreate with someone else? I'm more curious about the relationship of Palpatine than these three movies. Then we had Finn. I thought he was going to be Mace Windu's kid. He looked like he was force sensitive. They looked like they were going in some direction when he, when he was holding that lightsaber. I thought it was going to be, okay, he's a Jedi, he's Mace Windu's kid, and then we were going to get a series of Mace Windu surviving and then just going off on clone troopers. Wouldn't that have been awesome? Samuel L. Jackson in a movie of him just killing clone troopers. Wouldn't that have been awesome? But no, no, no. It's okay. Disney knows what they're doing. Then with Luke Skywalker, my god, can you a character assassinate someone worse than Luke? You assassinated Mark Hamill so badly that now his brain is just broken from now on. Man, that man is, you gotta check out that dude's Twitter. He is demented now. So all in all, man, we don't, <laughs> we're not gonna know anything about this movie for a very long time. But that being said, let me know what you guys think about that.